In this video we'll make this bounce and ball spinny loading animation which we'll export as a JSON file to use as a Lottie animation. Okay, so we'll start this one off in Adobe XD. Now you can make ellipses and shapes in After Effects, but I just think it's a bit more intuitive and easier to precisely space out and organize things like shapes in XD. And it's super easy to bring them into After Effects. So I'm on a custom size artboard, which is 1000 by 1000 pixels. And the first thing we need to do is make some circles. So we grab the ellipse tool. And while holding shift, we'll drag out a circle that's about 100 by 100 pixels. 102, that's close enough. Then we grab the selection tool. And I'm going to fill this first ellipse with a blue colour. And I'm also going to turn the border off. Then while we're holding option or alt on a PC, we'll click, hold and drag the shape and make three duplicates. And let's distribute these evenly and make sure they're aligned. Then we'll drag them to the centre of the artboard. And let's change the colour of these. This is completely optional. You can leave them all the same colour if you want or if you don't want to, then you can change the colour of them. And another couple of things I'm going to do to make this more organised when we bring it into After Effects is arrange the shapes in the layers panel. So I'll put these in order, 1 through to 4. And I'm also going to name the artboard. And that's all we need to do in XD, so now we'll bring this into After Effects. So making sure that the artboard's selected, we'll come over to File, Export, and After Effects. Alright, so when After Effects loads up, you should see your shapes in the timeline and the order that we put them in XD. And the first thing we want to do is change the duration of the composition because it's way too long, it only needs to be a couple of seconds. So we'll add up to composition and composition settings. And we'll change the duration to two seconds. Alright, now to start animating using keyframes. So we want the dots to sort of slowly raise up and then quite quickly drop with a bit of a subtle bounce at the bottom. So making sure your time indicators at the beginning will highlight all four of the layers in the timeline and press P on the keyboard to open the position settings. And because all of the layers are selected, we can press the stopwatch icon on any of the layers to add the first keyframe. Then we move the time indicator forward by 20 frames by pressing shift and the page down key twice. Then we move the dots up by dragging the positions Y axis down to around 350, 360. By the way, I'm moving these values in increments of 10 by holding the shift key while I'm dragging the value. Okay, now we'll jump forward, only by 10 frames this time because we want the dots drop to be quicker. So shift and page down key once. And because we want the dots to have a bit of a bounce, we'll bring the Y value past the original start and value of 500. So let's try 550. Then we move the time indicator forward another 10 frames and bring the Y value back to its start and point of 500. And let's play this back. Well, that's looking alright, albeit a bit linear, so we'll add some ease into the keyframes to smooth out the animation. So we drag and select all of the keyframes apart from the first ones. The reason I'm not selecting the first ones is because I want the dots to take off quickly. If they've got ease and applied to them, there'll be a bit of a speed difference as they move up. So we'll right click on any of the selected keyframes and go to Keyframe Assistant. And Easy Ease. And let's play this back again. And that's looking a lot better. Okay, now we need to stagger the animation so that the dots launch at different times. So we'll move the time indicator back to the beginner. And just to use it as a guide, we'll jump forward 10 frames. Then we'll highlight all of the keyframes for the ellipse 2 layer. And drag them so that the first keyframe lines up with the time indicator. Then again, move forward 10 frames. And do the same for the ellipse 3 layer. And then the same for the fourth. Okay, it's starting to take shape now, so the next thing we need to do is add the rotate at the end. So I'm going to move forward 10 frames again. And let's just minimise these layers to tidy it up. So highlight all of the layers and press P to close the position properties. Then we'll come up to Layer, New, and Null Object. A Null Object's basically a hidden layer that we can attach other layers to, then we can control the layers we attach to it through the Null Object. So to make the Null Object appear into our ellipse layers, we'll highlight all of the ellipse layers. Then we grab the pick whip and drag it onto the null object. And all being good, all of the ellipse layers should be linked to the null object. So we click on the null object layer and press R to open the rotation settings. And we'll set a keyframe. Then we'll drag the time indicator to the end of our timeline. And we'll do one full rotation. So let's play this back again. And that's looking pretty decent. I might actually get the rotation to start a bit earlier, so I'll drag the first keyframe just a little bit further along the timeline. And I'll add ease into these keyframes as well. 
okay, this is looking pretty good now. So now we need to export the composition. And as this is a lot of animation tutorial, we're going to need to export it as a JSON file using a free plugin for After Effects called Body Moving, which you'll find on the Adobe Exchange or in the description below. Once you've installed Body Moving, we'll come up to Window, Extensions, Body Moving. We'll make sure our loading animation is selected and set the save destination and file name and render. Now this can take a while depending on your computer and it's done. So that's it for this video. If you're looking for somewhere to host your JSON files, check out this video next. Whack the like and subscribe button and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. See ya.